leave because we already delayed so much by Italian coffee. Um, I'm looking forward to this talk actually, a collaboration between CERN and CRAS, and uh, really showing uh, what you can do if you are uh, expressing IR problems with CRAS. So uh, I'm giving the floor to uh, Alexander. That's right. For 20 minutes, we can block for questions, right? Okay. Yes. Thank you for uh, this. Um, thank you for this introduction. Better? Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, so as already mentioned, I'll be talking about um, supporting complex retrieval tasks through graph based information retrieval and visual analytics. My name is Alexander. I'm a doctoral student at uh, Graz University of Technology and at CERN, and also a member of the Open Search Foundation. Um, and yeah, with that, let's start. So, first of all, let's look at the motivation behind this work. So, as we all know, the amount of generated data is growing by day. Basically, we have everything from arbitrary objects in our houses to cars generating data at this point. And in addition to automatically processing this data and driving different applications with it. We also want to sometimes drive, for example, decision-making with insights from this data. And in this case, we need analytics tools. So specifically for our work, we focused on bibliometric data as an example. Um, and yeah, traditionally bibliometric data is extracted and retrieved by large services, as you all know and presented to users in some sort of a ranked list. So this is great if you want to quickly get the most relevant or at least perceived as the most relevant document uh, from a certain topic. But if you want to get more, for example, let's say complex insights like relationships between different documents, authors of these documents, institutions, and so on, and essentially get more insights from it, it's going to be hard to do with just a list. So this is where interactive visual analysis or just visual analytics comes along, uh, which essentially enables you to gain insight into large data sets and basically drive decision-making processes in an informed way. So there are already many existing visual analytics solutions, but there is also a lot of challenges that were identified over the years by a variety of surveys and experiments. So some of these challenges include how to better use interaction for the actual analysis. So how to enable users to interact with the data and gain more insight from the data. Next is the lack of empirical studies. So in most cases, you see a presented visual analysis solution or a visualization solution, but there's a lack of an actual empirical study, which would, for example, collect the data as we heard from a thought before and then analyze that data and provide more insight into how users are actually using or benefiting from this. And also, finally, one of the challenges is also how to visualize different relations, the relationships between data points, so between different features of data in an efficient way. And my presentation, right? Oh, no, it's working. OK. So, the next point I would like to look at is the combination of information retrieval and visual ana analysis or visual analytics. So there are also existing solutions that try to mitigate different limitations of existing bibliometric search engines. However, at least in our experience, most of them are either long forgotten or not actively developed anymore, are not really accessible to the larger audience, are not meant for large scale data, or simply don't offer any advanced analytical solutions. Uh, so with that, um, I would like to focus on a specific visual analytics solution, which until this point didn't really have the information retrieval component, which is collaboration spotting, which is a graph-based visual analytics platform uh, developed at CERN. And the whole idea was to provide the flexibility with large data sets and enable users to explore these large data sets by essentially selecting which features of a data set would be used as the nodes and which features would be used as the links between these nodes. So essentially providing visualization of different implicit or explicit connections between different data points in your data set. 
And so as the goal of this work, we essentially wanted to support users in performing complex retrieval tasks by using the graph analytics uh, platform. We also wanted to take a stop, step towards empirical evaluation and gain first insight into how such an approach could help users. And finally, also identify all future research directions. Okay, so what is the proposed solution? So essentially the proposed solution is a combination as mentioned previously of information retrieval and graph-based visual analytics. The idea is that the user provides a query of interest. We retrieve this data using a search provider and visualize it essentially as a graph. So visualize, instead of visualizing everything as a list, a ranked list of documents, we throw that aspect actually out and we focus on the connections between the retrieved data. And yeah, finally enable the user to essentially refine these queries over time by interacting with the graph and exploring the resulting graph. So for that, we also had to define a set of requirements. So as you can see, we wanted to, first of all, be flexible enough so to enable users to define whatever data set they want or actually use whatever data set they want and also be flexible enough in choosing the search providers. Uh, so for example, let's say you want to either um, send a query via an external API. Maybe you want to use a local instance of Elasticsearch. Uh, maybe you want to use a third party uh, Python written search engine. So it is possible. Uh, so the next thing is we also wanted to collect interaction data for empirical studies. So for future studies, um, then from the visualization aspects, yeah, essentially we wanted to visualize what we mentioned before was lacking. So first of all, the different connections between data features and second of all, um, basically visualize the different features, not just as connections and nodes, but also use other visual cues of graphs to um, yeah, enable users to quickly identify different patterns. So for example, either by using sizes um, of nodes, then for example, thickness of edges, then for example, also proximity between different nodes and so on and so forth. And finally, we also wanted to run leverage graph interactions. So in order to, first of all, like explore these search results. So instead of just scrolling through a list, in this case, you can actually look through the different details of your retrieved results and connect them in whatever way makes sense to you. And second of all, um, we wanted to enable also search query refinement through these interactions. So instead of modifying your keywords manually, you can actually go through the graph, interact with it, and so on. So these were the requirements. And with that, we get to the actual prototype, or actually the architecture of the prototype, since it's a more technically oriented talk. So the library boxes are essentially what was there before. So the graph generation, graph layout, and the API handling was already there. Um, second of all, we expanded some of the uh, aspects, some of the modules. So specifically, we expanded the graph visualization and interaction um, modules, as you would expect. And also, we had to expand the UI a bit to accommodate the new features. Finally, we also added a lot of new modules specifically for handling the search queries, for uh, connecting to different search providers and supporting different data sets and also connected an analytics system. So in our case, specifically, we use Matomo, um, basically because it's easy to set up. It collects all of the relevant data, and it's GDPR compliant, which I think is fairly necessary in the research world today. And with that, we get to how this actually looks and how a user might use it. So essentially, the user performs a simple search and is presented with a graph of results. So in this case, what you're seeing is a graph which is representing only the keywords of the resulting documents of a search query. Next, the user can explore this and like zoom in and select specific uh, nodes, modify the graph and change how it's connected and view different aspects of it. So instead of viewing just the keywords, maybe you want to view the authors, the institutions and the paper titles and see how they're connected. Or maybe you want to see which authors are publishing in specific categories of journals or 
conferences. Um, next, you identify a set of nodes of interest, and then you can select these nodes. So for example, you can either select an individual node or you can select all the clusters or components. Um, and the idea is in that case that we simply select the most relevant nodes out of that cluster or component for the new query. So next, the user opens the search model and this model is already pre-populated with specific queries and they can essentially like combine they can combine these queries uh, with some Boolean operators. And they can also select a data set, which they would like to search again through and yeah, get new data out of it. And essentially this process can be performed in, to infinity and beyond. And the user can essentially select if they want to go more narrow into the data set and have more strict constraints on what they would like to be returned. Or if they want, they can also expand this and get more complex graphs that cover a wider Area. Right, so for the data set, we used the JUX data set for the simple reason that um, there were no licensing issues. We had access to it and we had access to the metadata, and it was diverse enough to use for the specific example. Uh, we also extracted additional key phrases using uh, Yake. Uh, we split the categories of the journal into three levels. So the categories of the papers into three levels in order to provide more insightful graphs. And finally, we also extracted additional affiliation data like the name of the affiliation, city of the affiliation, and country of the affiliation. So you can imagine, you can see all of these things in the actual graph. So you can actually say that you would like to explore how different authors from different countries interact in your specific search results. Yeah, so then we performed an evaluation. So as I mentioned already at the start, we just wanted to take a step towards performing an empirical study. So for this first work, we just performed unstructured, sorry, semi-structured interviews in order to gain insight into how this can uh, help users and also to drive further research and further work later on. So specifically the goals were to identify needs of the users, and guide further R&D, as I said just now. And we essentially went into this with two hypotheses. The first one is that, yeah, visualizing retrieval results as graphs will provide probably more insight since already graphs themselves provide more insight to a user. Um, and second of all, leveraging graph interactions will alleviate some of the complications and some of the manual work that the user would otherwise have to do by just switching their query every single time they want to see new results. So as mentioned, the interviews were semi-structured. And the first thing we did was we presented three case studies to the interviewees. So uh, one of them was also demonstrated. So the new researchers case study was demonstrated. So the idea was essentially to put yourself in the shoes of a young researcher who's trying to explore a new field of study. And they would like to get more insight into what are the different topics that are being discussed in this field? Who are the prominent authors in this field? maybe also the institutions that are writing about this field. And essentially we guided the interviewee through the process of how they would perform the, their first initial search, then look at the, for example, um, used keywords in the, these different works from the resulting search results. And then finally, for example, explore also the different authors that are present there, maybe also expand their search with new keywords that they didn't know before and so on. Uh, Next, we also asked the authors, uh, so the interviewees, five questions. So the first one was just about occupation and daily tasks, so we could see how they fit into the entire picture. And the other four were focusing on the strengths, weaknesses, potential improvements of the system, and also if the interviewees see any other potential use cases for such a system. So where they would position it in the real world. Oh, too far. So the experts just shortly were essentially five ex experts from different fields with different levels of experiences. However, as you can see, most of them were in some way familiar with the concept. So they were either familiar with information retrieval directly or they were familiar with data analysis. So they were not completely foreign to the concepts that were presented and that are being used in this solution. Um, yeah, so these were the results. So first of all, essentially they, agree they agreed indirectly with the hypothesis that we mentioned already previously. So um, they noticed that it avoids them to 
fine tuning precision and recall manually by changing the different keywords and enables them to essentially just do it on the fly by selecting different nodes in the graph. Um, yeah, and uh, essentially leveraging different visual cues helps them a lot in identifying the different hidden um, connections between the retrieve data. So there was also a lot of improvements that we um, that we noticed or that we discovered. So um, I'm first going to go through the UI improvements. So the idea here was essentially we realized that the system was way too complex for, a, for an average user, even for an expert user, uh, which means that we essentially in the future have to redo the system and essentially make it more intuitive. The next one was to also um, provide some kind of uh, an advanced and basic UI based on the level of knowledge that the user has. Um, since not everyone is in computer science and familiar with all of these concepts. And yeah, finally, they also, they also suggested some customization options. Uh, then from the visualization ideas, they also basically what was disturbing them the most was that some of the nodes were overlapping. So in this case, the tricky thing is that um, there's, there are specific layout algorithms that you can use for your graphs. And in this case, since you are retrieving the graphs on the fly, not every layout algorithm will fit for this purpose because you are essentially getting each time a new graph with potentially different, different connections and different topology. So um, this is one of the key aspects that could be tackled, for example, in the future. Uh, additionally, what they missed is traditional representation. So graphs are nice, they're useful, they're um, insightful, but Users also need something where they can just relate immediately and understand immediately what they're looking at. So they need also a traditional representation like a list or a table. So um, essentially to mention what I mentioned previously, lists are maybe not useful for getting insight, but they're very useful for just understanding what you retrieved and what you got back. Um, so they also had some additional ideas like, for example, providing an option to, to essentially enter a natural language query and uh, retrieve data and also analyze data using, using those queries. So essentially to, to provide a sentence and say what you want and retrieve that automatically. Um, also generating reports. So one of the things that we noticed is what users missed was actionability. So one thing is to present the data and enable the user to get insights. The other thing is enable the user to essentially use these insights to drive decision processes. So how do I now use all of these insights and what I see on the screen for uh, future developments? So we also identified some additional use cases, for example, personal email analysis, code analysis, employee skills, and project participation. So later on, I can get into these, but for the sake of keeping the presentation short, I'll skip the details here. And finally, there were, of course, some limitations to this. So the first limitation was obviously that the interviews were semi-structured. So um, there was no predefined um, survey that we, we wanted to ask the users that was, for example, already proven to provide specific insights. Uh, there was also a lack of quantitative data. So for now, we just expanded the system with the um, possibility to collect interaction data, but we did not for this sake uh, collect it. Also, like there was only five participants and to be fair, that's fairly low. So. Um, but as mentioned previously, this was meant as a step to guide further R&D. And finally, also like the current prototype is fairly simple. So it's using only a limited set of interactions, which could be broadly expanded in the future. Right, so and with that, we get to the last section, which is future work. So we identified a lot of possibilities for future work and where this, this could actually work and be used later on. So some of the more interesting um, use cases were using the retrieved graph patterns for further searches. So not just using specific nodes to uh, refine searches, but also using an entire graph pattern because you have already the data. What are the, the connected, uh, for example, let's say connected papers, how they are connected. And this all of this data could be used to um, provide more pertinent search results. 
Uh, the next one is also supporting multiple users in their retrieval and analysis at the same time. So for example, let's say you're a larger data analysis team and you want to get insights into a huge data set. Um, it would be useful to, to use something like this, but um, at the same time by different users. There are also other options like graph summarization, um, generating entities from these graph patterns, although this kind of fits also into the, the first one where we are using the graph patterns for retrieval. Um, as mentioned before, clustering and layout for dynamic graphs. So since the graphs are generated on the fly and can be connected in whatever way you want, um, this calls for some new layout algorithms. Yeah, and also there are some other suggestions as you can see here, like conversational information retrieval, uh, generating the user models for aiding users in their retrieval. So essentially using the interaction data to suggest to the users what might be interesting for them in the new retrieval results and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, so finally, what's meant to be future work or actually since, uh, I'm not sure if three or four months passed since the submission, some of this is already present work. Uh, so essentially improve and refactor the entire system. Pro, then carry out an empirical study and finally support the user in their entire information retrieval process. So support them from the step when they actually retrieve the data to the step when they analyze the data. And finally, when they want to use this, use these insights to maybe present this to their CEO, maybe use it for their own decision-making processes or whatever else. And with that, I would like to thank you um, if you have any questions later on or you want to stay connected feel free to add me on twitter or contact me via uh, the email provided in the paper and with that there are questions but there's also a live demo if we we try okay we'll try we'll come with the question and we we'll try a question <laughs> and then you shut up the okay if you have a question then... Thank you very much. It was a very good presentation. I wonder when you were thinking about how to use or what to use your, your product or your research, uh, whether you could consider a classroom, whether you have a group of children and a teacher um, having to explore a common topic and having to report in the classroom as a possible scenario of use for visualization. So that's something very interesting to us. I'm not sure if I can get to the well, you did. Uh, okay. Sure. So, yeah, thank you for the question. Um, so, specifically, this tool in its current form, I would say, is too complex. So, already as mentioned, uh, just from the expert evaluation, we noticed that people had issues understanding, just wrapping their head around the concept of dynamic graphs and retrieving data. So, from that perspective, it would be hard to present this in a classroom. But for example, just providing predefined graphs and um, letting children explore it, for example, I think that would be something that would help them maybe intuitively understand how different connections between data work. Um, so yeah, I, I hope that answers the question. Yes, yes, thank you very much. We have the demo, one sec, and then a question from whom? Um, I think it was in the- No, also uh, there. there is a question from uh, Laura. Online. Yeah. Okay. And then, okay, let's go with the question. Then we yeah. see the demo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the demo is going to post some questions, maybe. Oh, I just run it and then we go on with the question. Um, no, no, let's go with our and then demo. Okay. And then the the Lava's questions first. Okay. <laughs> so, Lava, feel free to. Uh... Thank you. Um, so I, I, I have to admit, like, I love graphs. And I think from the very early days of my PhD, I was very much into looking at graphs, navigating graphs. But then one thing that I kind of like ran into again and again, is like the moment where the graph gets a little dense, it's essentially very hard to get an overview. Um, and in particular for like novice users who are not used to looking around at that, it's often actually not really so easy to see what they really want to see in a graph. Yes, you can cluster them and you can arrange them and you can do some analysis, but often I'm interested in something else, like what is the most influential one for my query? And I, I don't know exactly, you had the search function in your graph, but it looked a little bit like a Boolean query. And especially for Boolean retrieval, we know that you often get way too many results or hardly any results. I'm once wondering what was sort of like your more practical experience with that um, 
and but whether you have any ideas of like how to go about that. Yeah, so thank you for this very good question. And essentially, we had a very similar experience to what you just described. So the graphs are just too complex and too dense to explore. So the first approach, so why we actually wanted to combine these, these two aspects was, so the, the first idea was also that, that essentially by um, providing a retrieval function, we would uh, alleviate some of this, these issues with complex and dense graphs. But obviously, you still get way too many results, and they're way too complex. Um, there are some ideas for future work, since we're really actively thinking about how to simplify graphs and how to actually add more insights to them. Um, and so one of the things is also to, to enable the users to, so first of all, select just the concepts or just the entities they want to see in the graph. So instead of showing them the entire graph, so for example, instead of showing them the entire, let's say, um, graph of all of the retrieval res results with all of the features, we enable them to select only a subset of these features. So this won't influence the, the connections. The connections will still say, the same as they were before. The only difference is now we're not showing all of a sudden a um, graph with 10,000 nodes. We're only showing a graph with, let's say, um, 1,000 nodes. And here, like the actual patterns are already more apparent, but there's still a lot of work that can be done in this area. And we do plan on doing some of it in the future. So I, I hope this answers quite your question. But in case you have any other questions, please feel free to ask. Um, I just have one quick follow up because you said you want to you, the user wants to select a set of nodes or entities. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Did the user say that they want something where they select a set of entities and then in addition they want to see really really important like other other nodes that are very tightly connected to that one? Was that a thing that they cared about, or did they just want to see a set of entities that they really knew knew existed and the connections in between them? So there's two aspects to it. So the first one is essentially selecting a cluster. Let's say you're interested in information retrieval. You have a lot of keywords connected to information retrieval, and now you just want to explore all of the different topics that are surrounding this keyword. So in that case, you will just select a cluster and perform search based on that. And in that case, you're not interested in a specific prominent node. You're interested in essentially all of the nodes connected to, to the node information retrieval. On the, other hand, on the other hand, if you're interested in specific prominent features of the graph, we're not currently leveraging that, but as I mentioned already previously, this is also one of the things that we're planning in the future, essentially to leverage these different hidden patterns and also, for example, some more explicit patterns, like let's say, um, just looking at the node side, the size, or looking at the uh, node degree, we can already get more insight into which nodes are the most interesting, for example, or might be most interesting for the user. Um, but this is currently future work. So as mentioned, it's a fairly simple implementation at this point. So right now, Thank you. I suggest you show that in video. Yeah. Just press the space bar. OK, so let me just mute myself um, in the video, not in real life. Just three more minutes. OK. So um, just for a quick background, this is already the refined system. Um, so just so you're not weirded out by the different UI. And I'm not sure if the online audience can see it. So the yeah. first thing is you perform a search query, like in this case, let's say NLP, and we're doing it through the- You want to switch the, the camera, I guess. Oh, yes. Go on, go on, go on. So, and this is the resulting graph that you can see. Um, so now what we're gonna do is, Yeah, so now what we're going to do is just adjust the layout of it so we can see it better. And in this case, we select, for example, two nodes that are of interest to us. So in this case, natural language processing and formal languages. So now we perform a new search with this with these selected nodes, which are already like pre-filled at this point. Um, and yeah, now we should get a new graph, which is much more dense which means like there's way more papers which are specifically uh, on these two topics. Yeah, so in this case, it's a bit more complex. Um, so now what we're gonna look at is how you can perform a more advanced uh, selection. 
So, okay, now here I'm showing you just like the traditional view, like a list view where you can see essentially each paper is a separate row and you can see all of the authors, the countries and so on. And all of these are essentially nodes. So when you click on one of these, it will also show it on the graph itself. Um, yeah, so I'll just click on a specific, yes, thanks online, Alex. And now I'm gonna select the nodes from the same entries. So now essentially what I did here is I selected the paper of this specific author. And you can see here that uh, you have the country of the author, you have the, cate uh, the keywords, the category of the paper and so on. And so I would just pause here. So what we did now, even though it's still a simple search is we're differentiating between if you're searching for the authors, for the countries, for the cities and so on. So you can spe specify what aspect of the data you want to focus on and search for. And in this case, we're just gonna retrieve the resulting graph of this specific paper. Okay, okay. Can you see me or am I? Okay. Um, right, so let's continue playing. Yeah, okay. So now we see the actual paper and we see it's fairly, the graph is fairly simple. So at this point we have a very small graph. So what we can do is we can essentially select all of the features and view all of these features. So this is maybe related a bit to the question previously mentioned. So you can with this simplify your graphs on the fly if you need to, or you can make them more complex if you want to. Uh, so obviously there are also processing constraints and so on. So based on that, you also have to like be more attentive to, to all of these restrictions. And yeah, thank you very much. If you have any co other questions, feel free to reach out or ask me. And otherwise, um, yeah, I would just like to thank you again for listening to my talk. <laughs>